Welcome to episode 516 of the Aussie Tech Heads. As always, we proudly sponsored by ATH Web Hosting. Check out the Aussie Tech Heads web hosting site and sign up for your cPanel. Setting up email is a breeze. Aussie Tech Heads web hosting is at athwebhosting.com.au. And due to popular request, this show is hosted by Will and Jason, the top two podcasting hosts in Australia. How's it going, Will? <laughs> hey, mate. How are you? Good. You survived Christmas and New Year's? Uh, somewhat. Still working on it. You didn't blow I mean, your hands off with fireworks like a couple of guys in uh, Australia did? Well, actually, they blew their whole cells up, didn't they? Because they're we, um, six foot under now. Got attacked by a kangaroo whilst taking a cam to hospital and, you know, a few other bits and pieces. Well, but, that's, uh, that's how Australians know what's for dinner. Yeah. Who put the room uh, in the stew? Anybody totaled it. Oh, made a mess of the car. and So that was a good start to the holidays. <sighs> <laughs> and then a year before that, exactly twelve months to the day, the other X Trail got written off the day <laughs> after we bought it. <laughs> Maybe it's uh, X Trails you should keep away from. I mean, it's just driving in general. Yeah, <laughs> just walk to work. It doesn't take long to get to your office, does it? No, it shouldn't take. Well, if I left here at you know six, I'd be at work by six. Yeah, the next day. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I you were going to say six p.m. No, no. no. Well, maybe people... Are, you probably maybe. need a rest and a nap while you're going. Yeah, exactly. First episode <laughs> for 2017. Firework. Psh, 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 psh. And how many times do you write 2016 for the next six months? <laughs> Who writes anything? I don't even write checks or anything anymore. Checks? What are checks? Yeah. I shared a, <laughs> shared a um, animated GIF on Twitter... Thanks to everyone who's still following me after all these years. I don't know why. And then it had a picture like this cat and it had 2016 across the face. And of course, I get a message from someone saying, you mean 2017? I was like, well, I just went with whatever was in the app. You know, yeah, right. I'm not that excited about finding the specifically exciting gift to animate. I just want to say thanks. And I don't know why you're still following me, but keep up the good yeah, work. That's it. Uh, we also have to mention the um, podcast competition that uh, everyone needs for the castaway. So mm. we've heard from Mr. Uh, I'm not going to bother turning up for the first episode of the year, man. Uh, something about he's stuck at the beach and couldn't possibly get out or I don't know what it was. Yep. So have beach a look at um, castawayawards.com.au slash vote. And there's a voting gallery. You can vote for this podcast. You can vote for um, Obsidian Loft. And uh, don't vote for anyone else, just us two, because we're the best ones around. But uh, Glenn said, make sure we do that. So there you go, Glenn. You're happy now. Should we uh, do a bit of a chat of some news, perhaps? Yeah, if we can find any, I'll tell you what. It's been pretty ordinary. Given we haven't had a show for two weeks... Yep. Um, everything's well, the whole just tech sectors just shut down. Everything's just C. Yes. Oh, my! Your TV is now as thin as a piece of paper, and you can nail it to the wall or some crap. Mm. And robots, and uh, Google AI and Alexa and stuff going into cars. Yay! I wouldn't mind the Amazon Dot. I think it'll be fun to play around with, but. They're not supposed to be used in Australia, although I saw some places you could hack it. Yeah, why? It like, what's that matter? Well, they won't do. I guess they've got a certain number of servers that they want to overload mm. by releasing the devices all over the world at the same time. So they did the US, and now I believe the UK has got the Amazon Dot support. So I guess it'll get here eventually, although Amazon isn't really... They've got their servers in Australia, in Sydney... And not much at Amazon.com.au for you to buy, except for a few Kindle books. And you log on to there to your US account. It's like, hey, dude, would you totes like to go to the Australian website and make that your default Amazon one? You go, no, 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 no I do not. So I don't yes. know. Amazon really needs to do a push into Australia, I think. But um, you keep your Amazon video and we'll stick to our Netflix and stands and things. You watch much streaming stuff these days? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I stream pretty much everything I watch. Um, the, 
the couple of shows I really wanted to to get to make it worthwhile paying for Stan ended up not being on it. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I watch uh, Netflix for Mr. Robot. Yeah. Um, I haven't had a chance to watch this second season yet. <sighs> Dude, you got to hurry up. I know. I'm just. I just have not on. had time. <laughs> Well, I've actually got to go back and watch the first season again first. It's been that long, I can't remember anything about it. So I'm going Plus, to have to do Plus, once you a... know a bit of twist and stuff along the way, you go back and watch the first Make one again. Different. Like, oh, that's like... And then... And, and that... Cool. They yeah, really cleaned the head. So I'll probably just make a weekend of it. Just <laughs> shut the house up, turn the aircon on and sit back and... Yeah. <laughs> Did you get the um, Telstra Foxtel deal or just Telstra Internet? No, nah, Telstra Foxtel. Oh, okay. So you watch yeah. much of Foxtel? Not really. Um, I'm, I'm going to have time, pretty much. We did get the $10 extra for the sports pack, though, because Son likes her sports. Ah, okay. So she watches the tennis and the cricket. And yeah, the I was tempted by it, because $99, but... Well, it was the same price, with or without it. So I'm yeah. like, well, I'll just get it. Like it's <laughs> The only thing was, I was going through, it's like $189 set up for no special stuff and then they say well you could totally get the iq3 and that'd be really awesome it's got all these cool upgrade stuff but that's an extra i've got the iq3 i've got all i've had all iqs i've had iq1 2 and 3 over the years yep and functionally there is no difference oh, the okay. only difference is the iq3 is probably maybe 10 15 percent quicker oh, okay well, that's it um it doesn't it actually has they've nerfed a couple of features which i actually used to find very helpful in the earlier versions so yeah i don't worry but <laughs> it's paying for the iq3 you're not going to get any benefit from it and then the other thing is they reckon is probably better is the gateway max 2 for better wi-fi coverage and stuff well, that's the one i have that's the one that resets itself every couple of hours <laughs> Oh, it's got to keep your connection fresh, right? You don't want it to get... It, <laughs> be... these, these modems, they get bits stuck in them <laughs> and bytes, and if they get too many bits and bytes, then they just stop working. So if you reboot every three hours or so, then it keeps it fresh. Remember I was saying how you can actually hear the relay, the actual mechanical relays click, clicking click. in and out? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and at first I thought it was because we had bad power here, which is why uh, it was resetting every few hours. It was probably resetting about every two hours previously. Now I've switched it all over and I'm currently running my whole computer room, my mo modems, routers, my computer monitors, um, my electronics workbench. Everything's all running purely off solar and batteries. So it's perfectly clean power it's not and clean. it still resets four, to four or five times a day. And if you want to learn more about that, go to YouTube slash Mr. William Tompkinson's type account, which is called probably Mr. Tompkinson, is it? Mr. William Tompkinson, I think it is. Yep. And he's Mr. gonna Tompkins do some taken. <laughs> he's gonna there's more than one of you. God help us. Uh -huh. So he's gonna be doing some videos on how he did his solar setup and I believe there's one or two already there. There's there's a couple up and then when I get time, as I get time, I've got another couple planned and then I'm waiting on some more stuff to turn up and then I'll do a couple more. Why pay um, for electricity if you don't got stuff? Yeah, I mean it, you're still paying for it, but you're paying it in a different way. And you can set it up quite cheaply if you know where to look and what to do. Hmm. Um, and in the end, I mean, I, as I said, I think I've said a previous show, I was unaware of how much power my computer actually used until I started running it off-grid. Yep. Um, which is why I'm back down to one monitor at the moment. So if I'm, I've normally got four monitors up when I'm doing podcasts, just various things. But because um, of my battery power and I'm sort of restricted on power usage now, I'm just back down to one monitor. I only use the four monitors when I'm doing... Um, video editing and stuff like that and you can't minimise the screen so I'll make sure I put it up on one of the other monitors out of the way. <laughs> uh, uh, well, as I promised some news about 10 minutes ago or something, let's get we'll on talk to... about news. <laughs> Kaluva ransomware decrypts for free if you read two articles about not infecting your computer with ransomware in the first place. <laughs> That's like a sucked in here <laughs> read this. This it's better than the one that, that was came out last year that was we'll totally like uh decrypt your stuff for free if you send this link to two of your friends and get them infected, then we'll decrypt yours. Yeah. So it's like a pyramid scheme one. You get everyone infected as much as possible. Brilliant. These guys they must be laughing they're their just heads. So bored, aren't they? You can just tell they're bored. Like, what what's up cool we could do? So 
You have new in development variant of the Kaluva ransomware that would decrypt your files for free if you educate yourself about ransomware by reading two articles. Discovered by <laughs> security researcher Michael Gillespie, this in development ransomware is not ready for prime time. In fact, you had to mess with it a bit and set up a local HTTP server to even get it to display the ransom screen. In its functional state, Kaluva will encrypt a victim's files and then display a screen similar to the Jigsaw ransomware where the text is slowly shown on the screen. This text will tell the victim they must read two articles before they can get a decryption key. It then tells you that if you're too lazy to read the two articles before the countdown gets to zero, like Jigsaw, it will delete the encrypted files. This is not an idle threat, as it actually does delete the files. The articles that Kaluva wants you to read are an article from Google security blog called Stay Safe While Browsing and Bleeping Computer's very own Jigsaw Ransomware Decrypted will delete your files until you pay the, pay the ransom article. Once you read both articles, the Decrypt I Mia file or Decrypt My Files button becomes available. Once you click on this button, Kaluva will connect to the command and control center and retrieve the victim's decryption key. It will then display it in a message box labelled Nice Jigsaw in a reference to the Jigsaw ransomware that displays your decryption key. A victim will then be able to take that key and enter it into the key field in order to decrypt file. These guys are a riot. I love it. Yeah, well, so is yourself, right? <laughs> but you could just store everything on floppy drive. You wouldn't have that problem. Yeah. I was cleaning up today. I found a, the one lonely floppy disk sitting in the bottom of a box. <laughs> no I remember I don't the have first, flop, first. I don't have a floppy drive to tread to test second. <laughs> first virus I came across was on my uncle's two eight six. I think it ran from two floppy drives, and it was the stoned virus, and it just said uh, something PC's wonderful has happened. Yeah, your PC has been stoned. Did it scroll it diagonally it. across the screen? I can't remember that I now. Think, <laughs> the first virus I got was I think it was on my three eight six. It was back when I was share, co copying files off the billboards and sharing files mm -hmm. and off the BBSs. And I downloaded J, back in the day it was called JViewer, I think it was, to yep. view JPEGs. And it came with its very own version of Michelangelo. Ah. <laughs> so Michelangelo basically um, took your screen and basically shuffled it around like a piece of art <laughs> so it was sort of it was yeah that's nice was, i had um i had the coca-cola virus one year coca-cola virus yeah the coca-cola virus someone's um, it, it wasn't really a virus although everyone called it a virus it was actually just an app but back in windows 3.1 days you'd um it would say um what was it click here to receive your free beverage holder Oh, yeah, and, and you click and pop the out the CD. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what of fun we had. Didn't work with me because I had a cartridge load one, but you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be like those HD DVDs that never eventuated. They were like cartridge load DVDs, weren't they? Some of them were. There was actually cartridge ones, yeah. yeah. They weren't all that, but there were some that were. Um, Only then, actually... then you wouldn't get any scratches on your CD, so you wouldn't have to buy the same dvd four times because the kids got scratches on it or something so it was too too secure from being damaged so they said yeah we'll just stick with the same as the old dvd style yeah pretty much um they went through there's actually if if you're looking if you do like older tech and a lot of retro tech and stuff tech out tech out check out um techmon yep. t-e-c-h-m-o-n on youtube um, he does everything from um, um, old fifties reel to reel right through to the new. They just released a new one called the MQS SD, which is basically it's an album. You get a full little. You know how you know a micro SD card comes in a little plastic holder. Yep. Well, it comes with full album art and everything like that in the holder, and then it's got. Nice. Album art on top of the SD card, micro SD card, and everything like that. So <laughs> it's got a full album on this micro SD card. So yeah, so there's all sorts of stuff. He does the HP smartwatch and the old um, vinyl record players that played like a CD, where they'd actually track, they could actually skip tracks and oh, okay. play opposite sides. And yeah, so he's really good um, if you want to learn a lot about the retro tech and the old stuff. And 
stuff that we grew up with and some new stuff too like there's a, a company a kickstarter company that's actually just released um a bluetooth it's bluetooth um for your phone but it's literally the star trek communicator oh, okay <laughs> I, I just had this to your phone nice <laughs> it's it's really cool um does it make star trek noises yeah it does all the noises has all the sound effects has everything um everything you'd expect it's um but because it's actually a Bluetooth device, you know, it's it's actually functional. Like, you can, you can use it as, like, basically leave your phone in your pocket. Yep. I'm just trying to find a screen grab over here. You can basically leave your phone in your pocket and um, use it like a... Communicator. Like whoa, that's a bit <laughs> tricky how to do that. Um, yeah, use it like a communicator. So, you can see it, it flips open and, and does oh. everything. And... Um, it has all the different things like power cell drain when it goes flat and has all the noises when you flip it. And, <laughs> and um, it's I was fully thinking you were meaning the little communicator badge that they have on their shirts and you go blip, blip, beam me up, Scotty. But this is the actual... Yeah, no, no. The actual, yeah. Does it work <laughs> as a tricorder as well or just communicator? Uh, it's just communicator, I think. Somebody, I know there is somebody who's doing a tricorder one. Ah. Um, Does it actually um, analyze... Injuries and diseases and... Um, it sort of does um, some stuff like it, it uses the Google... Oh, there's a list of all the voices and commands and all the different stuff you can get it to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, see? Enterprise the bridge. Yes, sir. Like, that's how you activate the like um, voice c command and Enterprise Spock here. Affirmative captain. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, the tricorder, from what I can understand, it's another Kickstarter campaign. I was actually looking at it a while back. And it looks like it actually will use um, things like Google Pictures and voice recognition and it's got built-in thermal imaging camera and a few other bits and pieces. So it can gather about as much information as it can possibly gather. Analyze your environment. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, so it's pretty neat. It's, it's a piggyback, I think. I think you actually put your phone in it. It's like a case for your phone. It uses your phone as the primary. Nice. Well, yeah. Speaking of phones, oh, sorry, did you finish the story? <laughs> nice segue, and then you ruined it. <laughs> I thought we I were know. professionals. No, <laughs> you thought wrong, sir. <laughs> Speaking of phones, I've finally, after four years, almost killed my Note 3 um, to the point where like, even the autofocus in the camera doesn't... It just rattles around, doesn't actually do anything anymore. So you're going to get a Note 7, right? So, I, was I mean, 8. Around, like, Nine, ten. So I was looking around like, uh, what phones do I want to get? Do I want to get the new Note? Because, or well, the latest Note, which I think is the Note 5, which I think is the latest one you can get, Note 4, whatever it is. No, Note 5. Um, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, okay, well... The Google Pixel. Yeah, well, that was my first one I was going to get because it was the closest thing to a Note that was available at the moment. And I'm like... <sighs> And I was reading a few articles on it, and people aren't overly impressed with it. They're having problems with them locking up and, and stuff. I just read um, something briefly about um, shutting down when the battery gets to 30% as well. Same as yeah, the other phones have been doing. Yeah, there's a, just a firmware fault. They, they're apparently sending out a patch to fix it, but there's a few issues with it. I know a couple of people have got them, and they're not super happy with them. Um, the camera's intermittent. It's, it's a generally a very good camera, but the software that's driving it doesn't work properly. Yep. And then I started thinking, well, I could get the new iPhone, but apparently they explode as well. Um, but it's I'm a like, new okay. feature for phones, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking, okay, well, what do I actually want it for? I'm like, what? Uh, the last four years I've had this phone, 90% of the things I use it for, other than the basic phone, Facebook, email, and calculator, like 90% of the rest of the usage would be photos and video. Well, aren't you lucky that Android Nougat can do that? So, obviously, you've got an Android phone. Well, I was going to get the... Um, uh, I've got a complete blank. <laughs> I was going to get the... It's the company by... by um, me does... Yeah, I was going to say the company Me does the OnePlus. They do a Note, which is obviously just a Note ripoff. They do... Um, yeah, like the Mi Note, and they do a few things like that. And then I saw the Zoomi range. That doesn't um, sound like Android. They run Which Android. Android? Oh, no, they run Android. Ah. Um, yeah, I was going to get the Zoomi, uh, in particular the Zoomi Note Pro, which is 
haven't heard a, of that one. Note 4, which is a really high spec. It's an oct um, a Deca core processor. It's a 25 or something meg camera. All the reviews on YouTube say the cameras are fantastic. They're really good. They've got 64 gig internal RAM. They've got, you know, just like four day battery life. Like they're a really high spec camera. Um, and you can buy them outright for 250 bucks, roughly. Um, the dual SIM card, you know, they're, they're pretty much everything you'd want out of a phone. Yep. Um, oh, sorry, the 13 megapixel. The 3 gig RAM, they've got a 4100 milliamp battery, 5.5 inch screen, dual SIMs, IPS, LCDs. Um, they come with either 16 or 64. No, 32. They come with 16 or 64 gig of RAM. Um you know, they've got all this stuff. They've got a fingerprint scanner and, you know, just amazing reviews ever looked. And I'm like, okay. And I was literally about to click the uh, buy it now button on one. I think I got to get from uh, Kogan, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and in my Facebook feed popped up the, um, the Lumia 1020. That can't which, be Android. Lumia, as you know, is Nokia, and as we know, Nokia in the last few years have run Windows. Um, and in this case, they run Windows 8, I believe. Mm -hmm. I'll double check that. Uh, yeah, they run Windows 8. Um, and I'm like, <sighs> Nokia, really? I haven't had a Nokia in like 10, 12, 14 years or something since I had my last Nokia. Yeah, and you wouldn't want to have a Microsoft operating system, no, you, so you didn't you buy it, right? Then you got Windows on top of it, and then I looked at YouTube and started looking at reviews, and then the 41 megapixel camera with optical stabilization, and then I found an X-Demo one that was brand new in box for 150 bucks and 20 bucks postage, so I bought it. <laughs> Mamma mia! Who are you? So, <laughs> so, and I'm like, well, look, every single review and every single article I've read on it says that they have the best camera still. They're a three-year-old phone now, and there's still nothing on the market that even comes close. Yep. And I'm like, well, I want to start getting back into my videos for YouTube again. I've got a really high-quality camcorder, and at the moment, when I switch between my camcorder and my phone for video cutting you can really notice a difference in quality. I'm like, well, I'll just get this. It's cheaper. Um, it's still got 32 gig internal RAM. It's still a four and a half inch reasonable quality screen. Now the 41 megapixel camera that it actually takes 37 megapixel, uh, 36 megapixel images and a simultaneous five megapixel image. If you just want to use a lower quality one to share on Facebook or something. Yep. Um, it's got dual core 1.5 gig processor, Snapdragon processor, you know, it's got the the um, um, a, um, Adreno 225 process, which most phones have. So it's fully capable. It It's going to have the four apps. I know there's not much in the Windows Store, but there's like four apps I use on a regular basis. It's going to have those, surely. Um, an absolute worst case scenario, if I get jack of the Windows side of it and I can't use it, I'll simply keep it as a good quality camera mm -hmm. and I will go back and buy the Zoomy. So Sounds like win win. It still comes out even if I buy the Lumia, 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 the Lumia yeah, and the Lumia. Zoomia and... and the Lumia and the Zoomy, the Zoomy Redmi Note Four. Even if I buy both of them, I come in under five hundred bucks, which is still a third of the price of buying a new phone anyway. Yeah. So it's like well, a new Apple one. Yeah, you know, fifty. Well, between twelve and fifteen hundred bucks, most of the new phones are to buy outright. So I'm like, well, worst case scenario, I come out in front either way. So, yeah, big um, pretty much. So I, I'm really, I'm actually kind of excited because I haven't. I've, look, I've tried Windows phones and I have used Windows phones um, to some degree, but not as a full time thing. So we'll see how this goes. I'm not a big fan of them generally, but um, I think for the most part, it's going to be perfectly fine. So let's yeah, see how the, it goes. Um... Looks like the kind of phone that I had when I um, was working for a company down in Melbourne. They gave me a work phone and it was the um, Microsoft one because my manager hated Apple. So he's like, we're not getting you that. And 
He really liked the um, Microsoft Lumia range, so he got me one of those. I think it might be the same phone. It could have been the 999, which has got the slightly smaller camera on it, so it doesn't stick out like the the 1020 has got the massive big hump okay. on the back of it. Can't remember now. Yeah, there's a 909 or a 908 or something like that that's basically the same phone with only, it's only a 30 megapixel camera or something. <laughs> only, he says. <laughs> so. <sighs> but, so that's kind of... Yeah, so we'll see how this we'll see how this pans out. If it doesn't Good work luck. out, then I'll be getting the Zoomie in the next couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> a group claiming to be part of the international hacking network Anonymous temporarily took over Victoria's Human Rights Commission website with a nonsensical message about its social network, Anon Plus. Instead of the commission's website and its pages, a message from Anon Plus appeared on the screen, which says the group is non-criminal. It is unclear why the commission's website was targeted. Every person who has the goodwill, act, goodwill to act is welcome, the message said, which does not make grammatical sense. <laughs> Anonymous Plus spreads ideas without censorship, creates spaces to spread directly through mass defacement, publish news that would, as the media f will filter out and manage for the consumption of who controls. We do that to restore dignity to the function of the media. Media should be free without censorship. It must limit itself to show what is happening and don't say to us what is wrong and what's right. The message continues and on plus puts offline sites that actively contribute to the control of the masses from the corrupt that by manipulating information and opinions create false realities. This is censorship and on plus is not act for personal or political causes, has no leaders, moves to the interest of the people and we will fight until the leadership and powership will lead into the hands of people unique owner of the free world. At the end of the message, the group writes that no data was stolen or deleted. Only the homepage was changed. The message continues. We are not criminal. We are a non-plus. Yeah, well, the human rights ones, they're the ones who are supposed to be responsible for human rights, obviously, and they're not doing a very good job of it because they're the ones who have just syndicated or just allowed all the um, metadata storage and all the takedown well, of the... Pirate Bay and they got a cushy job sitting around doing nothing, so yeah, you wouldn't much. want to interrupt their coffee. That's about it. So, but that's basically what it is. And um, there's been a lot of websites in the last few months, actually. Um, most of them sort of go under the radar because the media doesn't want to bring attention to it. Yep. But if you actually go to the anonymous uh, anonymous Facebook page, they've got a list there of all the. I think it's their Facebook page. Maybe their website. Either way, they've got a list there of all the websites they've um, they've taken over in the last like two months, and it's pages long. <laughs> They're like, we're not, you know, we're just, and there's been a few videos and stuff put out lately about, um, you know, what their plans are and what they're up to. And they're like, we're just, you know, testing the waters and getting everything organized. And when it, when it happens, you'll know about it. <laughs> so. We'll but, talk about uh, it, no doubt. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, uh, the, the goings on of Anonymous could be a whole show all by itself. Like, it's just what, what they do and what they what they're up to and what they're exposing and what they're showing, all, all the stuff that's been covered up. And the biggest problem is people don't believe it because people believe what the media tells them to believe. So if it doesn't appear in the media, they don't believe it. Yeah. And this is the exact, I won't get into it, but basically that's why um, Trump won the election instead of um, Clinton because of the exact reason that people got so jack of the media constantly fighting them with Hillary messages saying, you need to vote for her and, and that. And then, so the media on one hand is exposing saying you need to vote for her and then there's all these reports coming in about all this other stuff that's been exposed and that's why Trump ultimately won because it was just people just overhearing about her. So the power of the Hillary media... Hillary fatigue. Yeah, pretty much. So the power of the media is um, fantastically powerful but if it backfires, it backfires. <laughs> there's actually... Uh, I won't say anything yet. I'll keep, keep your ears peeled. If you like... Um, political and um, shit stirring and um, nitpicking and uh, stuff like that um, there should be a new podcast starting soon oh I thought you were going to say wait till Eric's on it's going to be like Eric's show but it's actually going to have um, it will have actually known people as well people that most people will have heard of or know of to some, to some degree cool so yeah, that's that's a work in progress. So hopefully that'll take off. That'll be uh, that'll be fun. <laughs> I, I won't be on it too much. I'll be on it occasionally, but uh, <laughs> it'll be fun. 
it'd be very tiring i'd imagine if, if it goes the way it's supposed to go it's going to be a lot of fun and very tiring crazy <laughs> um so telstra who i i actually have a couple of uh, telstra stories um they're basically tailoring or they're customizing their plans now to offer more data uh for lower pricing cool i think actually i think you're telling me that they contacted you and said you want more data yeah for um, my mobile account they mm. outsourced it to third party company and they rang up and said well you're currently getting seven gigs for i think fifty dollars a month or something they said they said how would you like that for ten dollars cheaper i was like well my company pays for the phone so it doesn't make it any cheaper for me they're like oh well we give you 10 gigs instead of seven i'm like you you've just told me earlier in this call that for the last six months or 12 months i've used maybe one gig a month at the most so what would 10 gigs give me that seven gigs doesn't give me ah okay well if you're happy with everything (laughs) i'll just leave you then yeah yeah well they're basically saying that um they're putting in a new plan to retain customers revealing plans um to better tailor products and prices and offers more more competitive with the competition um they're basically they haven't released pricing yet but basically they're looking at revamping all their their data plans to match that of of competition i was looking at some other plans the other day when we're we're still thinking about changing carriers for Sonya's phone once their plan's up next month. And we're looking at, um, at this stage, probably something like um, Vodafone because their their plans are just ridiculous. Like how cheap the amount of data you're getting and, and everything like that is just nuts. Can you get Vodafone um, out in the boonies where you are? Well, yeah. I mean, we only get... There's only um, HSDPA for Telstra anyway. Uh, and Optus actually gets a better signal. Optus actually gets 3G out here. Oh, okay. So if Optus gets 3G, Vodafone will get 3G. So you're going to switch as well? No, I'll stay on one. <laughs> <laughs> my phone's not, my plan's not going anywhere. No. Um, they haven't called but, you up to offer you a better deal? Yeah, they could try. <laughs> um, but Telstra, at the same time, this is happening. Telstra backs calls to relax line of sight for drone flights. Now, as you know... It's currently illegal to fly a drone more than whatever it is, 60 metres up and more than 200 metres away or something because it's classed as unmanned flight and that's illegal and blah, 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 blah. Because uh, we have a beyond the visual line of sight clause. Um, so, but Telstra and some other big companies have thrown their weight behind um, this, this change in the law saying that um, with appropriate technical safeguards, the um, basically in our line of work, this is coming from Telstra. In our line of work, the BVLOS, which is the beyond the visual line of sight laws, will allow us to make more efficient, more efficient, bleh, more efficiency assess damage. Wow, this is written really badly. I should have pre-read this. It would make it more efficient for us to assess damage. Is what it's supposed to say to the mobile network towers and other infrastructure during disaster situations um, if the infrastructure can't be assessed by vehicle. Uh, I mean, if there's other uses for it as well, but that's... I'm really... I mean, I kind of understand what they're saying uh, about that, and a lot of the energy companies have been the same thing, saying, well, if there's an emergency, we can't get out there, at least we can send a drone up and see what's, you know, what's going on, done, or yeah. for bushfires or anything like that. Um Obviously, they're saying they still want regulations in place, but, you know, obviously you can't fly near airfields and things like that, but uh, they just want the laws sort of changed to the point that it makes it feasible to, you know, to actually have a, a drone that can fly, yep. you know, 6Ks away. You might as well use it to what it can do. There's actually a video I was watching on uh, on YouTube. This guy's, in, I think he's in Spain, I think it is, and he's sitting up on one of the hills like miles away from anywhere and he pans around you can just see the water way down this down the valley or the ocean way down the valley and um his house or his hotel he's staying at is right down there and so he set out to use a drone in the um the in the pure 
VR mode, so you wear the goggles and everything. It's all purely done with the camera on the drone. He set out to fly this thing from this hilltop. He had line of sight for the transmitter all the way down through the valley and all the way down. It was like 6Ks or 8Ks or something down this hill all the way down to where his hotel was. And so he just flew this thing all the way through across town. <laughs> you know, it was like it got down to like 5% battery by the time he just landed it. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, they usually only have about 15 minutes, don't they? Yeah, it was like really, it was on the wire. Like he, he got down towards the beach and he had like, 30% battery left and then he hit a headwind oh no <laughs> and it, once it hits I think the one he had once it hits like 15% it starts auto descent yep so he's once he's hit his headwind and it's hit started working harder obviously to fly against it and then he's got almost to where he needs to be then it started the auto descent <laughs> it's like <laughs> you're just trying to push through to get this thing down <laughs> and where it, it lands then suddenly it's somebody else's quadcopter well yeah, yeah this is yeah. this is sort of thing um I was reading something on one of the Facebook posts and people, how, I think it was actually might have been this article a couple of days ago, and uh, people were like, oh, if it flies over my place, I'm going to shoot it down. I'm like, no, well, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not like it's, you know, it's not like it's sitting six foot above your roof. It's going to be, you know, 100 metres up in the air. At the start of it, you're not even going to know it's there, you know, and it's not like, and then someone else said, well, you technically, I mean, other than the fact it's private property you're destroying, I said, you, you don't own the land any more than 25 metres up above your block of land anyway. Yep. It's all owned by the, the government, so it's not your land to protect. When I was looking at uh, real estate in Victoria, I was talking to the real estate agent. I said, oh, do you have like drones that fly around so you can get aerial shots of the places that are up for sale? They said, well, first... Hardly anyone cares about aerial shots of land. They want to see inside the house and inside the backyard, what features and things it's got, not what it looks like from the sky because no one's going to see that. But the other problem is one of the other real estate agents in town did do aerial shots and they printed on a big billboard out the front of their shop and uh, it turned out that the next door neighbour was doing a sunbathing in the nude and the quadcopter took a photo of her. She was just on the edge of the photo but got in there and she didn't know anything about it until some of her friends who happened to be walking past the real estate said, oh, we've just seen a photo of you at the real estate shop down the road. And so the real estate office got sued for breach of privacy or something. Yeah, but that happens anyway. I know um, even with the, the pole mount ones they do, yep. they basically have the vans with a giant pole that they run up and run the camera up. It's still the same thing. Um, you still got to be careful because they were doing one of the commercial buildings down our street, and because we're near the airport, they can't use drones. They got to use the poles. Yeah. I mean, the guy's got a drone. He uses it because commercial properties they want to see from air, so they can see the outline of the, the property. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he said he's had a situation, same thing, where he's been using the pole mount and looked over, and you know, during editing, they've noticed what's going on in the, the neighbor's property or whatever. <laughs> so. Oh dear. Twitter announced last year that it will kill off Vine and relaunch it as a camera app. And now we know exactly the exact date that it will happen, January the 17th. This means loyal Vine users have a shade under two weeks to save their Vines for posterity. The Vine website will live on as read-only archive for all videos posted to the service. Oh, excuse me, but anyone who has clips they cherish there should consider downloading them from inside mobile apps or a website before this deadline. Alternatively, they could hit up a number of services offering to transfer them over. Giphy is the most prominent option after it launched a tool for converting vines into GIFs. So get your stuff out before you lose it. I don't think I have ever been to the Vine website in my life. No, um, some of the guys I worked with at the web hosting company in Melbourne would show me YouTube videos, which are compilations of people's vines, because they usually only went for about seven to ten seconds, and so people would record several of them. Or, you know, record them over a week. You might get a dozen vines or something, and then they have, these other guys would take all of those vines and then put it in a video editing app, and then release it the best vines of whatever, mm. and watch it on YouTube. And so we'd see a few of them on there, but never actually went to the Vine website or watched an actual Vine in, in the Vine app or anything like that. Just no. another fad, and it's gone. 
Yeah, it'll be back. It'll be back. <laughs> it was like Periscope. Periscope was huge for a while, and it disappeared. Although Twitter apparently has bought it now, and they're going to be integrating it into Twitter, so we'll see. <laughs> to replace the phone that they just got rid of that does yeah, the same thing? I know. Well, no, it's, Periscope's more like um, Facebook. Just live uh, broadcast. Live broadcast, isn't it? Yeah, where you got people commenting on it and stuff like that. 2016. Leap second. Will our computers cope? Dun, dun, um, dun. Wait, that was last week. Apparently, it did. Um, just so you guys were obviously 2016 was a great year for us. It gave us a leap year on the 29th of February. It also gave us an extra leap second um, for the switch over to the new. What exactly are leap seconds? Well, they're made to make the usual timekeeping system, which is Coordinated Universal Time, or UTC, Coordinated Universal Time, UTC. Okay. Never gets more than 0.9 seconds away from the Earth tracking alternative Universal Time, UT1. Well, that used to be UT. Anyway. <laughs> Apparently, um, yeah, so basically it's... We actually gave the numbers in here somewhere where the maths worked out. Um, I was reading, yeah, however, uh, that one of the um, DNS providers' uh, databases crapped themselves because... The time was a negative number for the start of the new year and it couldn't mm. handle it, so they all shut down. They had to bring it back. But apparently Google, I think they said, got around it by... With the time servers, they would slow down the advancement of time by a few milliseconds leading up to it. So by the time it hit 0, 12 o'clock... That was right. It was right again. <laughs> yeah, well, apparently our planet takes roughly 86... 86,000, uh, yeah, 86,400.00183 seconds on average to turn instead of the expected 86,400, which is what you get by multiplying 24 by 60 by 60. Yeah. This may not sound like a great difference, but it amounts to a full second every 18 months. If left unchecked, it would become noticeable over time and ultimately problematic. So that's why every 18 months they have a leap second. How do we get into this awkward situation? Why not just define a second so that they're exactly the right number? The sensible idea was tried in 1874, but hit a snag. The earth keeps changing. <laughs> um, Darn thing. So in terms of today, a standard, a standard S1 second defined via atomic physics. The above discrepancy is due to the fact that the day is losing about 0.0015 seconds per century due largely to tri tidal friction. So um, the short answer is... Yeah, we have leap second, and apparently 61% of the internet time servers messed up this time around. <laughs> I so, think it was aliens. Aliens was, um, are adding time to our spinning Earth. So, But yeah, that's what you're, as you're saying, like a lot of the servers just freaked out because they switched over all at once and didn't know what to do with it. Yep. <laughs> um, we collected data from 180 such servers around the world during the June 2015 leap second. And assessed it from two points of view. First, the clocks themselves did they ju did they jump cleanly and sharply, exactly as required. And second, that protocol level, with what with respect to the messages the servers send to computers that rely on them, did they inform the poor the prop? Did they inform them properly of the upcoming leap year? Overall, we found that almost 61% of the servers were performing correctly. Many of the servers are well known to highly utilise potentially impacting thousands of clients, which means that there's 39% of servers that aren't working properly at all. <laughs> So. We won't mention that. Mm. Google is... Speaking of... <laughs> I was say, speaking of performing, not performing properly, NBN. <laughs> um, NBN Co. reveals first two area switches in progress. Along with five-fold increase in individual premises switches, NBN Co. has revealed that two undisclosed groups of premises have opted for an area switch to fibre to the premises. The two sites, which could encompass a community, unit block, or business park are the first to avail themselves of the area switch option under NBN's so-called technology choice program. Oh. NBN Co. provides few details in the first area switch sites other than to say they were under contract and in progress. The company indicated back in May last year they had provided quotes for two area switches, though it was unclear where these were. The current technology choice policy was launched in March 2015 and allows home or business consumers that are unhappy with their allocated access technology to pay to upgrade it, often to FT. FT fiber to the premises it costs between six hundred and thousand dollars to apply and receive a quote on the cost of proposed switch nbn co accepts applications from both individuals as well as whole areas wanting to make the switch 
So there you go. If you're stuck with ADSL imitating NBN, it'll only cost you $1,000 to get a quote to figure out how much it's going to cost you to switch to real NBN. There we go. <laughs> nice. NBN, NBN Co. said it has invoiced a $356,236 individual premise switch and a 297800 for area switch. <laughs> so it's actually cheaper to get your entire area switch than just your house. So get, get all your mates with your neighbours and get them all together. <laughs> the Tasmanian Council has previously quoted $2.7 million for an area upgrade. Wow. So, which all this would have been originally paid for had the NBN have been what it was supposed to originally be. Yep. People would have already been paying money for it and they would have been able to reinvest that in the future infrastructure that they're coming up to now. But that'd be silly. Yeah, I want to do that. Politics. That's it. Google Assistant will be available soon on Android TVs with plans to offer the voice activator personal assistant on car infotainment systems and smartwatches as well. The technology will feature in the coming months starting with the NVIDIA Shield on Android TVs in the US running Android 6.0 Marshmallow on Android 7.0 Nougat and some of the devices expected to ship with Google Assistant are the Air TV Player, Sharp Aquos, Sony Bravia and Xiaomi Mi Box. Sasha Pruta, Director of Android TV at Google and Gummy Hafstenson, Leader at Product Lead for Google Assistant wrote in a post on Thursday. Over time, you'll also see the Assistant come to other new surfaces like smartwatches running Android Wear 2.0, Android-powered in-car infotainment systems, and many other types of devices through the embedded Google Assistant SDK. Google Assistant is already available on Pixel smartphones, Google Home, and Allo smart messaging app. As part of an upcoming update on supported TVs and set-top boxes powered by Android TV, users will now be able to ask the Google Assistant to help or help to discover and play content, answer questions, and even ask it to dim the lights. Rival Alexa from Amazon is also making waves at CES in Las Vegas, announcing a number of design wins, including in the automotive and smartphone markets, such as the integration of cloud-based voice assistant with Huawei's Mate 9 smartphone. Ford Motor, for example, said Wednesday it would offer Alexa integration with its car infotainment system, Sync 3 AppLink, starting with connecting users to their cars from their homes through Alexa devices such as Amazon Echo, Echo Dot and Amazon Tap. The integration would down the line let users take advantage of a broad set of Alexa skills using their voice while driving, the car maker said. Google tied with Mercedes-Benz last month to allow users to communicate with and control their cars from their homes using Google Assistant on Google Home. Would you like one of these assistant things in your car or in your house? Oh, look, the theory is great. The problem is with the internet or lack thereof we have in this country. I don't know if I'd trust it to work <laughs> properly. <laughs> and this is what my thing I was saying with Tesla is I'd love to be able to get my hands on Tesla for a couple of weeks and just see what happens when it has access to such crappy internet. Yep. Um, how does it behave? You know, does it work properly? Does it have... I mean, it has fail states for short term, but, you know, some areas you can go through... You can drive for, you know, ages without getting the next... Yeah, especially sort of... with such huge distances between Australian towns yeah. and cities. So I just love... And all these connected things and all these robot and all these Wi-Fi and all this 3, 3G stuff, well, that's great in theory, but with our crappy internet... And even if you do have NBN or whatever, for the most part, it's unstable and unreliable at the best of times. Yep. So I'd love to know... Then again, how often do you OK Google or Hey Siri? Well, yeah, but what, what happens if it's, you know, how often does it hit the server to go back and do a program thing or check for updates or make sure it's sticking to a schedule or it's in the right spot or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you just don't know how much stuff goes on in the back end and whether or not it's an issue. Well, I just don't use... I've got OK Google, I've got Siri and devices and stuff, and I just never use them, really. I don't, I don't use any of that. Except for the, the stupid funny thing where you can ask Siri what's zero divided by zero and it tells a joke about the cookie monster and stuff. But Yeah. but I mean, That's about it. That's all I use it for, really. But when you're talking connected home or home automation or... Lights on. Know, any of that sort of assistance, that's a clapper. Um, any of that sort of stuff, then... I mean, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love home automation. I, I was doing home automation 20 years ago before it was even a thing. Yep. 
Um, and well, it brings me to my next point, actually. Griffin is a company that has, they do electronics. They've just released uh, the connected toaster and the kettle and the microwave and the whatever else they've got, sandwich toaster and all this other stuff they've just released, which is all the same sort of thing. You can now program it and put an app on it and tell it, you know, how you want it done. And um, it'll even message you back saying your toaster's ready and all this sort of stuff, you know. <laughs> it sounds pretty fun. Um, I mean, it's neat, but once again, you know, all this stuff on our using our low quality internet um it's okay i mean even if it's over the router you're right but you're gonna get to a point where you're gonna have so much traffic coming over your wi-fi that even your wi-fi is gonna freak out after a while because mm. all this look there's well, this is just a wrap-up of engage it so a lot of this stuff's from the last um you know cs or whatever but there's wi-fi just on this one page there's wi-fi camera there's wi-fi smart locks there's your kitchenware stuff there's the Griffin, which is um, like a, um, a router, keep your family safe sort of thing. There's this personal radiation tracker that uses Wi-Fi as well. Uh, even those point and clicks are now using Wi-Fi. You know, this yep. is, uh, the, the bin that you talk to. And it opens <laughs> up. You know, so this is all stuff that's literally... So if I now went and bought one of all of those, I've got no bandwidth left on my Wi-Fi for... They're all Internet. talking to each other. <laughs> you know, then you got Moro, which is basically a Amazon Echo with arms, mm -hmm. which is a robot. Then there's the smart cube that turns any drawer into a Bluetooth lock. Then there's, you know, all the, the new GoPro Karma drone and stuff like that that all uses Wi-Fi. Um, not to mention that the new cars, smart cars, like the new Corporation and NVIDIA and Audi and... Um, the new Xavier supercar, supercomputers and stuff like that, that once you come home, they connect to your Wi-Fi as well and do, do all the updates. updates and stuff they need yeah. to do. So. You obviously <laughs> need one of these, um, the new routers that are coming out that form a mesh network of multiple access points throughout your home and cover all the area and give you a bit more bandwidth. Well, but you've still got the same problem. You've still got the bottleneck. Like Your internet your... connection. Your internet connection is, especially if you're on a, a cable or an ADSL plan, um, you're going to be in all sorts of trouble. But even even if you're not, even if you're on a, an NBN, as I was saying before, the connection is not that reliable. And mesh is still great, but you've still got... Mesh only works with the devices in range. So if you've got everything in your kitchen, you've got 25 devices in your kitchen, they can only reach one router. Yep. Well, you've still got a bottleneck at that router because all the devices are trying to connect to that router. Ah, so, so what you mean is putting two routers in the kitchen? Well, you put one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just when when you wire a home up, just allow for five routers in every room. Yep. Um, but I mean that, that's sort of what I'm, I'm getting at. You know, like there's it's all fine and dandy to have all this stuff here. That's and don't get me wrong, I love technology as much as the next person. I love playing with it. Love seeing what it can do. I mean, I'm building my own pickaxe chip for crying out loud. You know. Um, but you've got to be, you know, if you wanted all these, and some people do, like a lot of people have more money than sense, will buy. CES recommends these top 20 products. Okay, I'll go and buy those top 20 products. Yeah. Well, that's okay, but then, then what? What do you do? Like, where do you go from there? And then, they, then all these reports come out how these products aren't any good and they don't work properly and they're flaky and they fail and they're not, not reliable and, you know, my dishwasher ate my homework and all this sort of stuff. It's, then it turns out it's not the device. It's... The, the infrastructure in the back end that's actually the problem okay. but nobody's nobody's bothered to think of that so got any more stories anyway. um just one quickly on tesla um speaking of of <laughs> devices and stuff tesla has just um bought online their latest gigafactory yep um it's still not fully completed it's still only running at 50 percent capacity or something um, but it is pumping out power walls and power packs, which is for the solar um, setup, stuff like that. And the Tesla Model 3 battery packs as well is just starting to pump out. Uh, it'll produce 35 gigawatt hours of lithium ion cells per day, which is, you know, a lot. Nice. Um, but the upside to this, um, sorry, per gigawatt hours of lithium ion cells per year. Nearly much of, nearly as much as the rest of the world can 
provide combined. Um, the Gigafactory is a joint venture between Telsa and Panasonic. It's still less than 30% of its eventual 4.9 million square foot. 4.9 million square foot. That's ridiculous. Massive. That's like one and a half. Yeah, it'd be one and a half million square meters. That's huge. Um, yeah, uh, but they, they render a snake because they needed a lot of batteries a lot faster than they were producing them because they received 400,000 pre-orders yep. for the Model 3, which ironically in the States is 35,000 US dollars. Yep. The same thing here is like 120, <laughs> which makes no sense at all. But anyway. The Australia tax, everything gets uh, it. Um, so they've had to basically start this factory earlier than they they expect to. Um but they, yeah, they now have also started getting contracts by these other electric vehicle manufacturers, you know, like Ford and, and Chevy Volt and all these other ones who are making electric vehicles um, because they now are making better batteries than anybody else. So these other manufacturers are getting on the bandwagon saying, "Hey, can you make batteries for us?" <laughs> so their factory is already at maximum production, you know. Um, the good news is it's going to employ currently employing six and a half thousand people and employ an additional thirty thousand by the time it's it's completed. So it's good for the uh, good for the area it's in. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be great for hobbyists like myself and people who love playing with electronics at the moment. Even to get secondhand laptop batteries like and use the eighteen six fifty cells and things like that out of them, it's still costing you know half as much as a, a decent new cell. Which is, you know, still talking ten dollars or so for a, for a second hand cell, or twenty dollars or so for a good quality new cell. Yep. What this hopefully means is that price on a new cell will come down to a couple of dollars a cell. So, for hobbyists who are doing stuff um, just for the sake of doing it, making your own power walls, or making your own battery backups, or making your own electric bikes, or whatever you're doing with the cells, um, it's going to bring it back into being a, a practical solution again, which is going to be really good. Cool mainly what I'm excited for. I mean, it's great that their Tesla's expanding and going nuts. And, you know, for if you ever um, get a chance, watch the history of Tesla. And it almost went the same way. I don't know if you with the DeLorean, DMC, DeLorean Motor, um, Motor Company, it almost went the same way as DeLorean in terms of how it all just sort of collapsed at the last minute. But he pushed through and... Um, and Doing well. And he um, brought up uh, what it is now. Plus the... Um, the housing and infrastructure that they're building on top of that, which is all solar. Uh, there's another good video on the new roof they're making. It looks exactly like the original roofing, whether it be tile or ceramic or shingle or whatever the roof is. Yep. Um, but it has integrated solar panels in each one of those tiles. Nice. So the whole roof is actually the solar panel. That'll save you a lot of money. Yeah, well, I mean, it doesn't... Apparently, it actually doesn't cost any more per tile to produce than regular tiles so basically you're roofing your house and you're getting power for free that's a good idea let's all do that yeah if only we lived in a country that had a heap of sunlight and a lot of empty space oh wait. and where politicians were not beholden yeah. to coal mine companies yeah exactly power stations that's it <sighs> two years ago chelsea quit her job as a pharmacy technician to play video games I went to work one day and I was like, I would actually be making more money if I stayed at home, kept playing video games and coming here, she says. That week she handed in her resignation. Chelsea is one of a growing number of Australian women making a living from Twitch.tv, a live video streaming platform that allows people from all over the world to watch one another play games. It's also a social network. Chat rooms are embedded into user pages next to video streams, allowing the broadcaster and audience to interact in real time. Going by the username xminx, Chelsea has become renowned for her skills in Call of Duty, so much that playing it online has become her bread and butter. Every night about 10pm she turns on her webcam, chats to some of her 330,000 followers and gets to work. Twitch has somehow escaped being coming a household name despite its phenomenal popularity. The company claims it has 9.7 million active users on its site every day and more than 2 million streamers a month. Amazon saw its potential in 2014 and bought it for $970 million 
even though the decision left many business commentators scratching their heads at the time. The company doesn't only deal in online interactions, it also live streams some of the world's biggest video game tournaments in which professional gamers compete in stadiums in front of thousands of people and millions of online viewers. Audiences for game tournaments routinely surpass those of mainstream television, yet somehow the scene manages to retain the illusion of being a subculture. While a tiny number of gamers become tournament megastars, more garden variety streamers make their money through fan donations and sponsorships. Popular streamers are offered the option of partnering with Twitch to install a subscriptions feature on their page, which gives the users the opportunity to pay a fee of $4.99 a month to the streamer's channel. Twitch, of course, takes a slice, but half the subscription fee goes directly to the streamer, and most users subscribe to support their favourite gamers. It becomes a base salary for streamers instead of just relying on tips, which once a month could be $100 and next month could be $4,000. You never know, says Mia. She's a relative newcomer to the world of live streaming. Although she's been playing games since she was a kid, she only discovered Twitch about 18 months ago through an online friend. So, you want to make some money, get yourself a Twitch account and start playing games really well. Yeah, well, just so you, uh, in case you're interested, that's uh, x minx there. Mm -hmm. um, my screen's kind of a bit... Let's see if I'll bring that up a bit. Yeah, how, do I, how does one... How does one compute? F11? <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, so... I don't, even, I don't know. I don't know games. I don't know if she's playing there, but um, it's a bang bang game. Yeah, so that's her. Um, so yeah, so she sits there and plays that. Each one of these is about four hours long, so she must play four hours a night. That's Australian, nice. apparently. Yeah, she Might must finish night. like two or three every morning. Mm. Sleep until midday. <laughs> Which is prime time for the state. So that's if you can't do it, that's the way to do it. Yep. Because um, you get prime time. So that's how we get people to watch our Twitch streams. We'll have to start them at midnight. Pretty much, because that's you know where most people are looking for in the states. They're sort of waking up about that then. So that's about how it works. Any time between midnight and sort of five o'clock in the morning is your optimum time to do it. You can be the Obsidian Loft Midnight Twitcher. <laughs> so Just keep up the coffee. That'll help the Twitchers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But, I mean, look, Twitch is, it's fickle. Um, I don't know, like, I, it's very, there's a lot of content on there, and there's a lot of people um, playing a lot of stuff on there, but it's really hard to find, you either get the people who just play and don't talk, yep. or the people who scream and yell and carry on into their microphone and hardly play, and do stupid stuff. to actually find somebody who's, playing a decent game and either narrating or telling a story or just chatting or talking to their viewers or whatever is actually quite hard yeah um and you look at some of these that have got ridiculous amounts of viewers like so i go for a lot of these ones who have got like you know 80 viewers and 60 viewers and stuff like that i find them more entertaining there's some of these ones that have got you know a hundred thousand viewers and, and stuff on a channel and you're like eh. yeah <laughs> You know, they don't really, I don't know, they don't really um, seem to be ent that entertaining, really. Yep. A bit boring to watch. Yeah, it's kind of weird. You think, obviously, they've got that many people for a reason. You'd think they'd be worth watching, but uh, I don't know. Don't know. Like, there's, and there's so many, there's so much, garbage. and the problem is a lot of them, they'll have English um, titles. Yep. But then when you actually click on the game, it's Russian or Chinese <laughs> or something, and you're like, oh, for crying out loud. Yep. And there's some guys, and this this is the one guy here, I think, there's some guys who actually haven't figured out how to stream or their gaming computer is not fast enough to game and stream or something. So they set up a webcam in front of their monitor of the computer they're playing on, stream and they it. stream through the webcam from another computer. <laughs> <laughs> That's nuts. <laughs> and you're like... um, Okay, and all you hear is the really tinny, crappy sound coming out of their laptop speaker. Or, or they're wearing headphones and you hear them just talking to themselves. Yeah, exactly. In their game. So, yeah, look, Twitch is great. Twitch. Um, definitely, and we use it for streaming and, and you know, it's fun, but you just ha you, you do have to be really selective on there. Um, there's a hilarious compilation on YouTube I was watching where uh, 
um, that's a stream of fails. Yep. And one of them is this chick, and she's talking to her, uh, her listeners about something. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll buy that. It's great. And she goes to Amazon, and she's sitting there, and she reads out her entire credit card number while she's <laughs> entering it in. She's reading it the out. expiry date. And, and, yeah, the expiry date and the number on the back, and she sends it off and stuff. And she's like, did I just read that loud? And they're like, yeah, you see through the stream. Yes, 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 yes. She's like, <laughs> that's like the third time I've had to change my card this month. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't learned yet. <laughs> Like, seriously? Oh, man. So. Well, if you want to see more interesting stuff, you can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Aussie Tech Heads. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash Aussie Tech Heads. And watch our videos on YouTube at, you guessed it, youtube.com slash Aussie Tech Heads. And Obsidian Lofts and Old Fart Geeks, of course. Yep. <laughs> Listen to the various Australian podcasts streaming from AussieTechRadio.com as well. You can hear Two Blokes Talking Tech, the Obsidian Loft Minecraft podcast, Old Fart Geeks, both of which we need to do updates for, yeah. Geeks Fear, Your Tech Life, and much more. Thanks for listening to another episode of Aussie Tech Heads, and we'll catch you again soon as Glenn gets back from his luxury holiday. <laughs> You're sitting at the pub or whatever it was he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, BlackBerry's just released a new phone. Sorry. I'm just incredibly taken aback because I thought BlackBerry had gone away. So there you go. <laughs> Alrighty. We'll leave you with right. that. Till <laughs> next <Whatever> time. That <laughs> Bye. Mm.